Welcome back to The Big Picture. My guest is Mickey Kearns, Erie County Clerk, and we're talking about the services of the clerk's office, some of the things that uh, you know serve Western New York, the DMV offices. Um, I want to stress that if you renew locally, if you deal with the DMV offices here, mm -hmm. the money that is processed a portion of it stays in Erie County Correct. because if you go online or if you do it by mail and send the money into New York State, it all stays with New York State. Correct. It doesn't help us here locally. Correct. So that's we we want people to come in locally. It's a major thing, and believe it or not, I try to tell people this: we're in competition with the state. They want they don't want you to renew local. They want every single penny uh, out of your pocket. At least you know if you renew with the Auto Bureau, and we're working on creative ways to do that, uh, where people don't have to come into the DMV, that it stays here and it helps keep taxes low, it goes right to the county, and it could help pave some roads and help support local programs. So I always say, you know, you wanna support your local municipalities, you wanna uh, renew local, we have green envelopes. One of the things that we did is I have a new person who's out checking, we have an outreach coordinator, going to all our libraries, going to all our facilities, and making sure that the green envelopes are there. You could always call my office at 858-8123, and we would be able to get you an envelope. I'll drive, if I have to, I'll drive it to your house, Phil, to make sure that you renew local. Okay, well, that's simple. Here's your choice. Send your money to Andrew Cuomo, or keep your money here in Erie County. It's super <laughs> simple. Yeah, okay, there's a, an interesting choice. Um, one of the things that the uh, clerk's office is responsible for is the pistol permits. Correct. In this, in, and I have a pistol permit, and I, and I talk to people who have permits. In this county, the process for getting a permit is a lengthy one, mm -hmm. especially compared with the counties around us. Mm -hmm. Is that just because of the volume and, and yes. the population? Is that make it just a longer process? Sure. When I came in uh, to office, uh, you know, the first two weeks I would see long lines out in front of our pistol permit office at 92 Franklin. And we really restructured that office. And I used my private sector experience as a former vice president of a company. I said, you know, I didn't hire a consultant, didn't cost taxpayer any money. I sat and I went into that auto bureau uh, or that pistol permit office for six straight weeks. And I figured out, wait a second, we have two parts of what we're doing. We have people coming in that deserve service on a daily basis, like yourself, a current mm -hmm. pistol permit holder. They have to do an addition. So that's I, I consider, and we know this in the private sector, is the front office work. And I was able to open up two new offices, one in Chittawaga at our Auto Bureau, and one in Alma at no cost to taxpayers. And we were able to move some of that out. There are no lines anymore. We created an mm -hmm. express line. We reshuffled some workers, didn't hire one additional worker. Guess what? There's no lines. Even the Buffalo News couldn't believe it. They came in numerous times. They wrote an article, and I yelled out, there's no lines. And they're right, you're right, Mickey, no lines. The second thing we did is, obviously, we want people who want their Second Amendment not to have to wait for a long time. So I know uh, there has been comparisons to Niagara County. I got a great relationship with Joe. I just met with them. But they do not have the volume that we have. But we're bringing down, uh, I just had a person say to me the other day, six months, we're working with the Sheriff's Office, and we're going to continue to make improvements. So now we have dedicated people just working on what I call the back office of the pistol permit department. And we're gonna to continue to do that. One thing that uh, I try to say to the legislature, we did try to secure an addition position, is the number of people seeking permits, and uh, mostly our women, are, is going up steadily. Well, we haven't had any additional staff in those offices. So our work keeps on going up. Our revenue keeps on going up for the county, but we're not getting uh, the proper funding for that office. I know our county executive would not fund that position. Uh, he funded many other positions for himself, but he didn't fund the position. We're the only office in the county that creates revenue for the county. We keep your taxes low. So we're gonna send over an additional million dollars this year. So I'm not looking to spend like a drunken sailor. I'm just trying to give the customers the best possible service. So I believe that uh, going forward in 2019, uh, my staff, they always estimate that it's between six and eight months. I believe that it'll be closer to six months. And I think that when we implement the new policies, uh, for example, I'm looking at doing the fingerprinting right in the house. That'll be a, 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 te a revenue generator for the county. I think we'll be able to have additional money and we're streamlining the process. 
And Phil, one of the things we're doing is we're doing it by reservation. You mm -hmm. can't get a haircut. You can't go out and get an oil mm -hmm. change. So people are coming in. We're, we're going through with them. We're giving them one-on-one -on -one service. Uh, I believe that uh, at some point in time, we will be down to a four to six month pistol permit uh, 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 process and it's it's working with the municipalities the longest part of the process is obviously the background check dealing with the personal uh, check by the municipalities where they go mm -hmm. out a person a law enforcement agent goes out not only do, do they talk to your people who are recommending you to have this great responsibility they are um, you know, meeting with you so I think yes there's a you know it's a little bit of a wait we're working on it I know how important that is but I want people to have their Second Amendment. I'm a big believer in the Second Amendment. And one of the things that the state's done is with the recertification process, and when I came in, that was another thing that they put on us, an unfunded mandate from Governor Cuomo, um, a little provision where you would have to recertify every five years. They're looking to create their own database. The counties are in, in, in control of their own data. And we're gonna have uh, some really good announcements that's not only gonna help, the pistol permit owners, but we're gonna do something to help our law enforcement officers mm -hmm. and expand uh, their access to information, which will be a good thing for everybody. Well, that is encouraging. I can't wait for those announcements. Um, that's interesting. You say the uh, county executive didn't uh, fund any other positions. Uh, is, how much influence does the legislature have in the budgeting? process in terms of uh, personnel and you're kind of a net uh, gain in terms of oh, revenue correct uh, so uh, how who, who really determines your fate in terms of budget well really it's the county executive uh, the county executive proposes the budget he's mm -hmm. the executive and we understand that however um, we do have an opportunity to go to the <laughs> legislature and, and make our case I thought I made a strong case. One position that we were seeking, and it was interesting, I brought a book from uh, the clerk's office that was sitting on a shelf, just sitting there, and uh, it had Leon Selgas, who was the assassin of President McKinley. We were just talking about mm -hmm. history. And I said, here's this book sitting there that anyone could look at, and it showed his indictment from beginning to end, and, and thank God Leon ended up in the electric chair. Mm -hmm. He should have got it probably twice. Quite quickly, as a matter of yeah, fact. Yeah, quite quickly. <laughs> it, it, less than two weeks from beginning of the trial to the end of the trial but that's part of american history mm -hmm. that book is falling apart what happens if someone stole that book or if someone took that book and ripped mm -hmm. that, those pages out you can't recreate that on uh, the internet these are original documents that we need to preserve so we send about 2.3 million dollars to the state of new york uh, we haven't gotten any of that money back uh, to do any grants over the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we usually can apply for a $75,000 grant. So I figured, listen, $40,000 job, we're minimally gonna get $75,000 back for the state, there's a net gain. We need to preserve these documents for the future. I said, if that was Dallas and that was Lee Harvey Oswald, they'd probably be, that book would be somewhere. And I'm working on making sure that it's preserved. But as the county clerk, I have a obligation by the state constitution to preserve these documents. Now, if I don't have someone doing that for me, how do we maintain that and how do we apply for those grants? You need someone, it'd be a civil service position, so it's gonna outlast me, so it's not a political appointment, but it's a civil service position. But these are the things I think you need to do um, when you're uh, an elected official is you don't think about today you think about the future and I have an obligation at least why I'm the county clerk is I'm going to do everything I can to preserve important documents for our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren so if they come into the clerk's office and they say um, can I see history yes you can see the book that showed the indictment of the man that assassinated President McKinley that happened here in Buffalo New York and I think that's important well, that's uh, yeah, that's very interesting, especially as a as a fan of history. Uh, I'd like to see that in a publication somewhere. Actually, I'd probably pay for uh, a publication that that included historical documents like that. Um, and I never thought about yeah, that. That's, you, you a, that's actually could be a revenue. revenue. It could be another yeah, source. We'll have yeah. to name it after you. But <laughs> I, I think you're right. And we have the other thing is Phil. We have documents that are used on a daily basis that are historic doc, historical documents, like mapping out of the clerk's office that we have to keep for the public to see. So to me, um, it's really cool and not to care about history 
uh, I think our county executive was a little short-sighted on that decision. Well, you have several services that the, the clerk's office uh, deals with, you know, real estate mm -hmm. transactions in the DMV, and uh, you've got programs that, that help veterans yes. uh, in the various uh, venues that they have, the, their posts. And mm -hmm. uh, this, I mean, we only have about a minute or two left in the program, mm -hmm. and I'd love to get to a lot of these mm -hmm. things, and we just don't have the time. But if people want to get information on some mm -hmm. of the things that the clerk's office offers in terms of services they can go to your website mm -hmm. and and or make a call um, how do they maneuver the the information process in in inquiries what we're going to do is um, we're going to become an outreach office so we do four satellites uh, right now and uh, we're going to be expanding services out to the public we're going to make it as easy as possible it's not easy to come downtown we know that find parking, especially the way downtown is booming. There's not a lot of parking with the density. So we're gonna be doing outreaches. You can always go to the website. Uh, if someone wants to call my office at 858-8123, they want me to come to their senior center to make a presentation, happy to do that. And remember, uh, that information is there. We're gonna be going outward. We're gonna be going to the public. Uh, Wayne Gretzky, if you're a hockey fan, used to say, skate to the puck. <laughs> we're not gonna let the puck come to us. We're gonna go to the people. And you know I like to do that. You know I like mm -hmm. being out and about. Well, that's great. Um, you know, this is a, it, it, it's probably the office that deals the most with the public in this uh, Erie County government. And it does a great job. I mean, I, I've, I've really experienced the services in the DMV office that have been improved in the pistol permit office. That's all the time that we have now for this big picture. I'd like to thank Mickey Kearns, our Erie County clerk, for being my guest today. and. Uh, Thank you for watching The Big Picture, and thanks so much for watching WBBZ-TV. We'll see you next time on The Big Picture.